Contrary to popular conception, there was little glamour in the Old West. The wonderful adventure offered in the books and films that chronicled its past was largely mythical. The characters who stalked each other down dusty streets, pranced on horseback, and danced through gilded saloons and movies since the great train robbery were mostly the stuff of fiction. In the 1930s and 1940s, two generations listened in rapt attention to Western radio programs such as Red Rider, The Lone Ranger, and The Cisco Kid. The writers of these Wild West dramas, as well as those who followed them in the film and TV eras, had little or no idea of what the Old West was truly like. Their heroes were drawn from the ancient concepts of medieval knights, their villains stemmed from the legends of dragons. The image of the Old West was the long-cherished image of the heroic and often the superhuman. Not only did the Western lawman outdraw and outfight every outlaw, but his horse was capable of galloping endurance and fantastic leaps that certainly rivaled the flying feats of Pegasus. In truth, the West was a place of unspeakable hardships and dangers, as this encyclopedia will clearly show. Early death threatened the pioneers at all turns, from hostile Indians to vicious weather, disease, and roaming white renegades who slaughtered the innocent indiscriminately to obtain and hold the West's most precious commodity, land. It was the land that caused the range wars, where cattle barons attempted to wipe out the small ranchers, the immigrant farmers, or the sheep herders, whose flocks vied with cattle for the grazing lands. It was the land that became precious once the railroad sliced through its far horizons in search of cattle to be shipped to the beef-hungry east. Along the steel paths of the railroads mushroomed the cattle towns of the west, Ellsworth, Hayes, Wichita, and Dodge City in Kansas. And with these early-day settlements came the cowboy, adept with horse and gun, the tools he would later employ in robbing banks and trains and killing for hire. The towns themselves, from Leadville to Deadwood, from Silver City to Tombstone, were little more than a huddle of clapboard shacks and rotted mud streets. Hygiene was practically non-existent, and settlers died prematurely of diseases long since vanquished by modern medicine. Saloons and bordellos were usually in greater number than churches and schools. The women of the town were mostly prostitutes who spread venereal diseases of all sorts. The women who gained notoriety in the West were invariably prostitutes or became gamblers or ribald saloon characters such as Calamity Jane and Poker Alice. Calamity Jane was celebrated in such films as The Plainsman, in which Jean Arthur portrayed a whip-cracking Calamity, and Calamity Jane, where Doris Day played her as a singing stagecoach driver. In real life, Calamity Jane was, sadly, a barfly, or gunfighter groupie, who followed the likes of Wild Bill Hickok from saloon to saloon. The so-called bandit queens, Bell Star and Cattle Kate Watson, were the camp followers of bandits who thought of them as inconsequential persons. Bell Star wore dresses and rode side saddle, but she delighted in posing for photographs while wearing six guns. She was, in truth, the mistress to many an outlaw, including Cole Younger, Jim Reed, Sam Starr, Blue Duck, and Jim July, all Indian bandits. Ella Cattle Kate Watson was the consort of Wyoming rancher and rustler Jim Averill, and had nothing to do with stealing cattle. Averill simply stored his stolen herds in a large pen behind Watson's bordello, giving the impression that Watson was a hard-riding cattle thief. They were both lynched by a posse during the bloody Johnson County War. The West's only known female stagecoach robber was the youthful Pearl Hart, who robbed a single stagecoach outside of Globe, Arizona in 1899 and promptly got lost. She and a male accomplice were quickly tracked down by a posse. Belle Siddons, also known as Madame Vestal, was probably the best-known female gambler of the Old West, 
operating her own gambling dens in Wichita, Kansas, Deadwood, South Dakota, and Denver, Colorado. She fell in love with a stagecoach robber and accidentally betrayed him so that he was shot to pieces in an attempted robbery. Siddons was so overcome with grief, the legend goes, she took to drugs and was later found in a Chinese opium den in San Francisco a short time later. The West was a man's world, one in which a man generally prospered if he carried and used a gun well, or could afford to hire gunmen to protect his interests. The gunmen who hired out to the cattle barons or the merchant princes did not magically spring from the wind-swept western earth. These gunfighters and bandits were homegrown, beginning as cowboys or farmhands on cattle ranches who visited the lawless railheads when driving herds of cattle from the south and southwest. These unschooled youths, most of them illiterate, became experts with six guns and rifles while battling Indians, rustlers, and wild animals. They rode horses with ease and thought nothing of traveling hundreds of miles in the saddle. Cowboys knew little of civilization and its laws, except when visiting the rough precincts of cattle towns. Thus, they had no use for laws and the lawmen who enforced them. A cowboy easily became a bandit or gunfighter without having to make a moral decision based upon an appreciation of ethics and morality he had never acquired. He became a bad man only in the eyes of those who understood his actions as crimes. Murder and robbery to the unschooled outlaw were actions of survival, a way of life. Tom Horn, a runaway farm boy from Missouri, became an army scout, lawman, and bounty hunter before becoming a tool of the cattleman. He killed the teenage son of a rancher Horn's employers wanted to eliminate, and he was hanged in 1903. There were many men like Horn who chose to work both sides of the law when it suited their purposes. Luke Short was one of these, a deadly marksman with a pistol who killed several men by whipping out a six-gun or derringer after his opponent was already aiming a gun at him. Buffalo Billy Brooks was the town marshal of Newton, Kansas in 1872, fearlessly shooting down bad men. But a year later, he was capable of shooting a rival in the back from ambush. Brooks wound up dangling from a rope as a horse thief. Henry Newton Brown rode with Billy the Kid in the Lincoln County War in New Mexico and later became a lawman in Texas. On the side, Brown robbed banks and was shotgunned to death by vigilantes for robbing a bank in Medicine Lodge, Kansas in 1884. One of the most feared lawmen of Arizona was Burton Alvord, who later gave up on the law and rode with outlaws such as Billy Stiles. Alvord was tracked down by dogged Arizona rangers and spent several years in jail before ending his life in Panama. Other one-time lawmen who became notorious outlaws and gunfighters included mysterious Dave Mather, the quick-draw Bass Outlaw, long-haired Jim Courtright, and John King Fisher and Ben Thompson, who were both killed while watching a vaudeville show in San Antonio, Texas in 1884. The most deceitful lawman turned outlaw was undoubtedly Henry Plummer, who was elected sheriff of Bannock, Montana. He promised to rid the area of thieves and outlaws and built a huge scaffold on which a few undesirables were hanged. Secretly, Plummer hired every outlaw in the territory and organized their robberies and plundering until he was exposed by a dying henchman he had shot. Plummer, begging for mercy and sobbing hysterically, was hanged by Bannock citizens in 1864 on the very scaffold he himself had ordered built to restore law and order. The hapless Plummer had built an empire that collapsed beneath him, but this was not the case with cattle barons whose cowboy armies fed the ranks of outlaws and robbers. Most of the cattle barons owned huge ranches and gleaned millions from their beef. They ordered rival ranchers and troublesome lawmen shot. They ruled the range, and their political power was unchallenged for decades. Isom Print Olive was a cattle baron who developed immense cattle herds in Texas and then moved to Nebraska, where he claimed hundreds of miles of rich grazing land along the River Platte. His was an empire of enormous wealth and power, and yet, in 1886, the stingy Olive died at the hands of one of his own cowboys, to whom he refused to pay a $10 bonus. Another colorful and typically self-aggrandizing cattle baron 
was Abel Head Shanghai Pierce, who ruled a vast area of Texas that supplied endless herds of Texas longhorns to cattle towns in Kansas. Pierce was a rough-and-tumble character who encouraged his cowhands to ride into towns firing their six guns and help themselves to any women or item they coveted. Pierce was a thorn in the side of lawmen such as Wyatt Earp, who had to constantly back down the cattle baron's bully boys. Pierce reveled in his own legend and to perpetuate its memory had a huge bronze statue of himself built on his ranch. It still stands today commemorating Pierce and his dubious progeny, the lawless cowboy. The West was full of real characters like Pierce. Some of these colorful creatures were inventive enough to inspire the publication of hundreds of dime novels. One of these was California stagecoach robber Black Bart, an elderly gentleman who wrote bad verse and left little ditties in the strong boxes he looted to taunt pursuing lawmen. Another aging outlaw was the celebrated old Bill Miner, who was robbing trains long into the modern era. Bank and train robbers like Sam Bass of Texas, Rattlesnake Dick Barter of California, and Black Jack Ketchum of New Mexico were daring in their robberies, but all came to violent ends. Ketchum was hanged in Clayton, New Mexico in 1901 for train robbery, a gruesome affair which saw his head decapitated because the hangman improperly applied the rope around his neck. The most colorful bank and train robbing gang operating at the end of the outlaw era was a band known as the Okla Hombres, led by Bill Doolin. His co-leader was Bill Dalton, the only remaining member of the infamous Dalton gang. The other Okla Hombres included Dynamite Dick Clifton, Bitter Creek Newcomb, Red Buck Waitman, Arkansas Tom Jones, and Tulsa Jack. There were those who were as rough and ruthless as the forbidding western landscape. The Apache Kid terrorized New Mexico, Arizona, and northern Mexico for several years before his death. Depending on which story one wishes to believe, he was either tracked by a posse to his lair and killed, or he mysteriously disappeared in the mountains of Mexico. Captain Jack, a Modoc Indian, led a band of killers that robbed, raped, and murdered their way through Oregon before he and his lieutenants were hanged in 1873. California produced not only dashing bandits such as Joaquin Murrieta, whose legendary exploits made him a folk hero, but fierce killers such as the cross-eyed, mean-minded Juan Soto, who was called the human wildcat, horse thief and cattle rustler Tiburcio Vasquez, and gold wagon robber Tom Bell, a one-time physician turned outlaw who was hanged by vigilantes. One of the most bizarre characters of the West was Alfred Packer, who pretended to guide a party of treasure seekers to the gold fields of Colorado, only to rob and murder five men, and later cannibalize their bodies to survive the winter. Judge Roy Bean ruled the roost in the town of Langtree, Texas, named after Bean's idol, singer and actress Lily Langtree. Bean called himself the only law west of the Pecos. Bean once fined a dead man for carrying a concealed weapon so he could justify taking the money he found in the pockets of the corpse. Another judge, Isaac C. Parker of Fort Smith, Arkansas, was known as the hanging judge because of the severe penalties he meted out to outlaws and desperados brought before him. Often appearing before Parker was a colorful lawyer named Temple Houston, the son of the great Sam Houston of Texas. Temple Houston fiercely backed up his legal opinions with six guns. He was the role model for the heroic Yancey Cravat in Edna Ferber's Cimarron. There were extremes among the ranks of lawmen and gunslingers whose conduct was so bizarre that even the most fearless men shunned them. John X. Beidler made a career out of vigilantism and is credited with hanging more outlaws than any other retribution seeker. Buckskin Frank Leslie would shoot at anyone who annoyed him, including his own wife, who finally divorced him because he insisted upon standing her against a wall and tracing her outline with bullets. One of the boldest thieves of the Old West accomplished his enormous robbery without a gun. James Addison Rivas, 
known as the Baron of Arizona, forged land grants to prove that he practically owned most of Arizona, a claim that was accepted. For almost a decade, Rivas collected tens of thousands of dollars in tribute from railroads and mining companies for land rights before his colossal forgery was exposed and he was sent to prison. Those who wielded the gun in the West, however, ruled its inhabitants and territories. A lone gunman could terrorize an entire town, but was boldest when working with gangs. It was the old Western gangs, many held together with blood ties, that launched the first daring raids against banks and railroads. Most of these outlaw bands were made up of brothers, such as the Burrow Gang, the Reno Brothers, the James Younger Band, and the Daltons. When gangs were exterminated, splintered, or disbanded, individual bandits became fugitive desperados who took unrealistic chances and increased their risk of capture. Rather than face the possibility of jail, an abhorrent thought to any Western criminal, many an outlaw, when cornered with no hope of escape, committed suicide. Such was the case of Harvey Logan, known as Kid Curry, Grant Wheeler, and the notorious Sundance Kid and Butch Cassidy. Suicide was less prominent among Western gunfighters who made their livings as killers for hire, enforcing the edicts of the land-greedy cattle barons. They killed mostly from ambush and seldom, unless drunk in a saloon, fought it out with opponents in head-to-head -head combat. Most of these gunmen received their special knowledge of weapons and marksmanship as youthful cowboys. These pistoliers included such men as Bill Longley and Cullen Baker of Texas, Jack Slade of Colorado, Zip Wyatt and Cherokee Bill of Oklahoma. Some were little more than hired assassins, like Jim Killer Miller. In general, the Old West was never noble or altruistic, although it had a smattering of principled lawmen to lend that illusion to latter-day historians. These included such iron-willed sheriffs, marshals, and deputies as Heck Thomas, Bud Ledbetter, Chris Madsen, and Billy Tillman. In Kansas, the gunfighters and outlaws were stopped by the likes of Bear River Smith, who upheld the law in Abilene, preferring to use his fist instead of six guns. Mike Meager, as Marshal of Wichita, took on whole crowds of gunmen in keeping the peace. Meager had the dubious distinction of being attacked while sitting in an outhouse, wounded three times by a gunman he had locked up for drunkenness the previous night. Recovering from his wounds, Meager shot and killed the gunman a short time later. Keeping the peace in Arizona were lawmen like John Slaughter and Billy Breckenridge. After he retired, Breckenridge wrote a book about his experiences, which he entitled Hell Dorado. Within months, the book made Breckenridge more money than all the pay he received through his many years as a gun-toting lawman. Two groups of lawmen became legendary, the Arizona Rangers and the celebrated Texas Rangers. The Texas Rangers produced some of the greatest, most respected lawmen of the Old West, among them Leander H. McNelly, John Barclay Armstrong, George W. Arrington, Ira Ayton, and John Rip Ford. But the outlaws were too many, and the lawmen too few to keep the peace. The lawmen chose a peaceman instead of direct confrontation to even the odds. There were few high noon duels in which gunmen and lawmen faced one another bravely and fought to the death. The rare exceptions were some of the gunfights of Wild Bill Hickok and the gunfight between the Earp and the clanton McLowry factions in Tombstone in 1881. For the most part, Western gunmen were sneaky, back-shooting killers who fired from ambush, lurking in the shadows of dark alleys or behind walls, rocks, and trees while waiting to send an anonymous bullet into their victims. However, there existed a special breed of gunfighter who thrived on gunfighting alone, having no ambition other than to best an opponent with a faster draw and a deadlier aim. These men were rare in the West, egotistical to the point of lunacy, and certainly many could have been certified as insane. These gunmen included the mercurial Billy the Kid, the unpredictable Clay Allison, the hot-tempered Ben Thompson, and the vainglorious John Wesley Hardin, who proudly claimed to have killed 40 men in gun duels before he himself was shot in the back while rolling dice in a saloon. 
The Western lawmen who faced these maniacs were also a special breed, as courageous as the outlaws were devious. As sons of pioneers, they too had learned gunmanship at an early age. The backgrounds of most famous lawmen, such as Wyatt Earp, included parents who preached to their sons the moral necessity of obeying and upholding the law. On the other hand, many of the worst outlaws, bandits, and gunmen of the Old West often grew up under the stern hand of a strict father, the mother having died early. Many had no parents at all and wandered about as orphans, prey to criminal fagans, victims of a lawless society that encouraged the illegal and the illicit. The Wild West was not a term of hindsight. It was called that during its own time and for good reason. Life and humanity meant little to its anxious inhabitants. Between 1850 and 1900, the heyday of the lawless bandits and gunmen, only a few resolute men with tin stars stood up to the lawbreakers, risking and losing their lives at an alarming rate to win the West for unborn generations. The willing courage of these few good men is the true legacy of the Old West, to be found now only in the myriad boot hills that marked their way.